Welcome to Bill Morrow, the uh, the Liberal candidate in Thunder Bay, Atacokan. Thanks so much for joining me today, Bill. See, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, Bill, uh, we'd like you to share a little bit about your personal background and the skills and interests that you bring to public service. Well, personal background is um, Thunder Bay has been my home almost my entire life, uh, save for about five or six months when I went to uh, went to Edmonton as a kid, but uh, I've been here the whole time. My family's been here the whole time. We, we grew up in Port Arthur. We moved to Fort William. Uh, deep roots in the community, and I guess if I was going to say uh, to you what is it I'm bringing to the table in terms of public service, I think the thing that's got me more interested in the provincial level, Steve, going back to 2003, was my six years of experience on Thunder Bay City Council. Uh, I greatly value the work that municipal councillors do. Uh, I enjoyed my time there significantly. But at the same time, I think I gathered and, and appreciated that you're somewhat limited in what you can accomplish on behalf of your community. And even though I was asked to run federally, I saw the province at the provincial level as having more levers that I felt could positively impact your community. So that six years of experience uh, as a municipal councillor really sort of drove me to the next step. Great. And, and so what are your top <clears throat> two reasons for uh, seeking public office again? You're the well, I think in Thunder Bay, we really did go through a period of time where our community was stagnating. I think that people used to say on a very regular basis that nothing was changing in Thunder Bay, nothing was happening. Many of us lamented the fact that, that our kids were leaving on a far too regular basis. They couldn't find opportunity here uh, to stay in the region. I, I truly believe and, and take great pride in the fact that I do believe over the last 10 years, people are not saying that nearly as much anymore. Things have changed, I think, for the better uh, here in Thunder Bay, uh, Thunder Bay Atacokan, uh, Thunder Bay Superior North, I think I could certainly add in there as well. We are seeing significant change. Our economy has diversified. There is more opportunity. I think we've seen significant advancements in healthcare, in education, in highways. There's a lot of things that we've managed to accomplish over the course of the last eight or 10 years that I think are holding us in good stead. We're poised very well to move even further uh, in, the, in the next number of years. Well, thank you. So I have two, uh, two questions around policy issues. Sure. One is, you know, one of the ones I'm keen on, workers' compensation yeah. and, and occupational health and safety. We're seeing a, a rise in traumatic fatalities on the job, Bill. And uh, at the same time, we're seeing that the benefits for workers that are injured and disabled are going down. Yeah. What <clears throat> does your government do to kind of bring balance back to the system? Well, we don't have a lot of time. It's a long, it's a, it's a one I'd love to have more time to answer, Steve. I, I would say that I go back to 87. It was the Peterson government that, that brought in full indexing of benefits. We saw that being whittled away beginning in 95 by two successive governments. While we haven't brought indexing back, we have increased benefits by, I think, about 9 or 10% for injured workers over the course of about the last four or five years. It's not indexing. I know that's one of the things that injured workers are looking for, and clearly there's more work for us to do there. On the prevention side, uh, we engaged uh, some time ago a chief prevention officer in the province of Ontario who has a broad mandate for trying to help prevent as best he can. We've launched the Mining Act, uh, re not the Mining Act review, but a mining workplace review that we hope will yield some benefit there. I always look to my personal experience. Like you, I worked construction uh, for a number of years when I was young. Before I went back to university, I was a member of Plumbers and Fitters Local 628. I had a couple of pretty serious incidences myself. I know from which you speak. I was lucky, uh, not seriously uh, disabled in any way, shape or form, but very close in one occasion. And so I know how important this issue is to a lot of people. Great. We just have about a minute left. Yeah. The last is, is, you know, our economy has depended a lot on our natural resources. Yeah. A number of our communities have gone through the boom and bust cycle. Yeah. What can we do to have sustainable development in, in the area of natural resources? Well, I think in, in natural resources, probably the focus we would be talking about would be in forestry. We know that we're able to cut and log in Ontario anywhere from 22 to 6, 26 a million cubic meters sustainably in the province. We were doing that until the forest industry crisis hit in about 04, 05, 06 it began. We went down as low as 8 million cubic meters. We're back up to around 12 million uh, with lots of room to grow. Sustainably, 22 to 26 million represents about 1% of Ontario's uh, sustainable cut. 
we're working towards that. That's only one example. I apologize we don't have much more time to talk about that at length, but we're being very careful in that regard. And we are out of time. Yep. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Bill, and I want to wish you the best of luck in the upcoming election. Steve, my pleasure. Thanks for having Thank me. You. Yeah, thank you.